Hansson. Uh, I think it's a great pleasure to me for uh, having you here. Thank you so much. Um, having this interview. So uh, we'll try to be brief because we, have, we don't have so much time. Okay. So, uh, I don't want to introduce myself, so I think I will give you this uh, question and you will answer yourself, okay? So, who is Dr. Ole Johansson? Uh, please, could you tell me uh, about your background in electromagnetic field research? Okay, I work at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden, where I had the so-called experimental dermatology unit. And I'm a neuroscientist, so I know a little bit about the brain and spinal cord and peripheral nervous system. And after my dissertation, I became more and more interested in human beings and in their skin and other peripheral tissues. And uh, then I came across people that claimed that they had uh, skin problems when they sat in front of the new personal computer screens. And that started the whole uh, journey uh, along the lines of electron hypersensitivity. And of course, it expanded into general health effects of electromagnetic fields uh, on the immune system, on the blood brain barrier leakage, on uh, the fertility issues, cancer, neurological diseases, etc. So it has become more and more and more big over the years. And I'm still at the Karolinska Institute. I have spent a few years also at the Royal Institute of Technology because I had a PhD student uh, who worked with um, accessibility measures regarding building planning and building technique to make a room like this accessible for a person with electrohypersensitivity. And she presented a very thick uh, doctoral thesis actually. Uh, uh, so that was the reason I was employed there for a few years. So uh, my second question is, uh, What's the Bio Initiative report and why everybody concerned with health issues so read? Uh, well, the Bio Initiative report really is a prolongation of many years before, already in the early 1990s, we had seen in Sweden that the official health authorities, they made different compilations and reports and summaries leaving out the important and relevant papers and instead only dealing with papers that were of no interest. And I felt personally, and other scientists in the world also did that, but we needed to sit down and make a more complete, or should we say 100% complete uh, overview. And during a meeting in Italy in 2006, uh, we decided that we had to do the work and for nine months we worked very hard and at uh, August 31st, 2007 uh, we launched the Bioinitiative Report, the first version on the internet and since then it has been updated 2012 and 2014 and today it's in the order of 5,000 scientific references and uh, approximately 2,000 published pages. Parts of it has also been peer review based uh, published in a special issue of a journal called Pathophysiology in 2009 uh, to meet criticism that uh, the Bioinitiative report is not uh, scientifically published in the correct way, but it is actually, and including my own chapter, it's in this special issue. So the general public can download, I think. Of course, oh. yes, yes, of course. I think it's for the general public, as bioinitiative.org. Exactly, and uh, at the same time, I, want, uh, I do not want to sort of scare off any person, but it is thick, and there is a lot of references, and you need to really be careful when you read, so you try to understand as much as you can. And um, if people would like to have a, should we say, a short summary of eight, nine pages, there is a statement from uh, 2010 published in uh, the same journal, actually, and um, uh, that can also be uh, downloaded, or I could send it to people if they are interested. Okay, perfect. So, uh, my third question is, uh, uh, talking again about this report, uh, several cell towers uh, studies have found bioeffects in the range of 30 to 500 microwatts per square meter, which is uh, a normal reading in major cities. Uh, do you, does it mean we are foreseeing a pandemic of enormous proportions? Yeah. 
I do hope we do not foresee any such pandemic, but uh, the chances and risk are definitely there. And there are already very scary signs when it comes, for instance, to learning abilities, uh, to short-term memory, to sleep patterns, to immune reactions, fertility issues, etc., among human beings, as well as impacts on insects, plants, other animals. And hopefully it will not develop into something bigger than that, but it's big already. Scary, I oh, say. it's scary. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there could be a lot of other confounding factors. I don't say that the electromagnetic fields are the only ones causing this, but in laboratory experiments where you can control for all other factors, it's enough with the electromagnetic fields at the human exposure level to develop very, very scary effects. Awesome. Okay. My next uh, question is, uh, how can parents can effectively uh, protect their children from electromagnetic field exposure? Do you have any practical recommendation or tip? The, yeah, I mean, to begin with, it is not very easy to do that, but to begin with, naturally, you can stop buying and using all these gadgets. And also, when you send your children to school, uh, you should uh, then tell the school that they have to stop using any wireless systems and instead use the wired shielded cabling. And of course, the information they will get to their computers will be exactly the same. And also, more and more, like in Scandinavia, but also in other countries all over the world, the notion is growing that these uh, tablets and mobile phones and computers they are not the answer uh, to all the pedagogic questions and when people want to make a new Albert Einstein out of their children or a new William Shakespeare then they need something else namely adult parental guidance mm -hmm. not gadgets as such you know it's a little bit like uh, when I meet people that are as my wife and I are, we are very interested in amateur gardening. Uh, and people look at our garden and say, oh, what kind of a rake and what kind of a lawnmower and so on did you use? No, we used our brain. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, all these things, they don't create a garden. It's only the gardener's brain which will do it, you know. It's the best guidance you can give to parents. Of course, yeah. And parents shouldn't be so afraid. Um, in Sweden and Scandinavia, and also in other countries, I know that we have these special schools like Reggio Emilia, Montessori, and Waldorfstein schools, which often do not use gadgets like this. And still, these children mature actually better on average than children from other schools. So even if you don't give your child all these electromagnetic exposure sources, they will still mature, become adults, and learn a lot, you know. Yeah. And I just saw uh, yesterday evening when I came back to the hotel, uh, I saw that the very famous uh, Hollywood actress Kate Winslet uh, she doesn't allow her children to use all these computers and tablets and so on because, quote, she wants them to live in the real life, end of quote. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, two days ago you told me of several scientists uh, once committed to alerting the general public about the dangers of electromagnetic radiation technologies, which now are reconsidering their views regarding such dangers. Can you elaborate? Well, yes, yes uh, it's, uh, yeah, this year, 2015, has been a very odd year. At the same time as a lot of these questions have reached the top level of society, including the finest scientific saloons, uh, also people have rapidly changed side, uh, and people that sort of were on my side have become opponents. And I don't know why, uh, but um, a colleague to me said that all of these things happen when you are coming closer and closer to the final truth. Then there is a turmoil in society, you know, and panic. Uh, and uh, hopefully we have learned, like from the tobacco scandal, so we do not allow 
the industry to have any influence on, uh, for instance, politicians. But when I recently was at a meeting in Brussels, I learned that around the uh, European Parliament there are 15,000 lobby offices. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, 15,000 lobby offices, and they shouldn't be there. Yeah. They shouldn't be there. So mankind has quite a long way to mature still, you know, and we will not mature with all these gadgets, that's for sure. You know. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So uh, since we don't have too much time, uh, my last question is, uh, do you have any personal vision of how we as humans could achieve a war more in harmony with nature? Um, you know, I'm a very sort of simple man. Mm -hmm. uh, for me to achieve harmony with nature, it's just by stepping out into nature and uh, it's nothing more than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife and I, for instance, we don't use a lot of these gadgets at all. Uh, we are not particularly interested because our lifespan on this planet is very short. And therefore we want to be outdoors together with our cats and the neighbor's dogs and the birds in the woods and all the plants, etc. you know, and with the water and the fishes and whatever. And uh, that's it. I mean, uh, um, it, it's nothing peculiar really. And uh, my personal interest, for instance, is very much into compost production, which anyone 50 or 100 years ago was an expert in, of course. And I always smile when I go uh, to the um, uh, shop to buy, for instance, wine. It says ecological wine. 50 years ago, it didn't have to say that because all wines were ecological, all foods were ecological and so on. And now you put the stamp on it and you can charge 10 euros more for that bottle, you know, because, oh wow, this is so good, this is natural. Uh, and it's, of course, course fooling the consumers and I think these consumers they have to make up their mind what kind of a life do they want to have and I see more and more reactions especially against stressful uh, life behaviors mm -hmm. people are sick and tired of that and when I left Sweden I read that uh, Facebook uh, which my wife and I have never used uh, but they are losing a lot of their um, uh, uh, consumers uh, people are saying no thank you to Facebook because they feel it's a time loss, complete time loss, you know. So maybe the future will be more bright and uh, also that people will start to rethink their life's values and also naturally come up with uh, tomorrow's green human friendly technology or whatever that will be. But I'm sure while we are talking there are people, young or old, sitting somewhere thinking a lot and inventing, constructing, manufacturing and selling new gadgets. Hopefully better maybe the same or even worse. We don't know that, but that's the general development of human knowledge. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Yeah. I think maybe your advice can be just try to live a very simple... Yeah, and, and you know I have had the fantastic opportunity to meet some of the best kitchen chefs in the world. I remember particularly one guy in Paris. He had won a lot of prizes and stuff like that. And when I met him and we went to his kitchen, which was huge, you know, with a lot of plates and stuff like that. And I said, what, what, what kind of tools do you use, you know? And he said, tools? I don't uh, use any tools. Well, you must have uh, some special uh, tools, you know. No, I only use this knife. And he put out a knife that was about uh, 10, 15 centimeters long with a pretty dirty shaft in wood, you know. But he had this. He had the brain, you know, uh, so he didn't have to hold these shiny things. He could still be the best in the world, you know. Yeah. So, nice as well. Yeah, it is, yeah. So, uh, that's, that's all. Yeah. Uh, thanks again. For yeah, the, thank you so much. Yeah. God bless you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks so much.